Week 8, college football. It is time for the Why Lose Campus Pod. I am Lance Taylor, and we are here to give you guys winners. We're going to take a deep dive on five games as we roll into Week 8 of the college football season. Hard to believe that uh, already half of the season is in the books. That is very depressing when I say that out loud. We do have an expanded playoff, so uh, you know that is something to look forward to. And all of this, the, the insanity that is actually – taking place this college football season and the unpredictability. I mean, this is crazy what has been going on. And just going back to last weekend, uh, you know, right here where I originate out of in Birmingham, we obviously cover a ton of SEC stuff and and specifically Alabama football. And Kalen DeBoer takes his job back in January. And um, a guy that just had incredible success from Fresno State to Washington and then takes over Bama, beats Georgia. They're up 28 nothing. They're the number one team in the nation. They come back the next week. They lose to Vanderbilt. And then lucky to survive South Carolina as three-plus touchdown favorites last week. That's just one example of all of the insanity going on. Um, Alabama goes to Knoxville. We'll get into that game here in a little bit, 3.30 ABC. Um, I will be heading up to Knoxville um, for that game telling you for college football fans out there and look i know we're all over different regions coming to you guys and i know there's great venues all over in college football and you know i'm a little biased to the sec because you know when you've got 100,000 fans week in week out at these different venues and you've got tailgates that start on thursdays um it is pretty incredible but but knoxville there is something special about that place especially in the month of october uh, driving through the Smoky Mountains, seeing all the foliage um, should be a tremendous setting for great college football this weekend. So not to bore you guys with that, uh, but I am going to be feet on the ground uh, looking to forward to being actually at my first game this year. I've been on the couch. Time to get on the couch or get off the couch, mix up the, uh, the routine a little bit. Uh, just to be completely transparent with you guys, last week we were fucking terrible. Um, there's no other way to put it. Awful. Um, but we bounce back, you know, we've already started this week. One and oh, um, you know, love the fact that we've got Tuesday, Wednesday football as well. Uh, so we've got something to play in football every single night. And, uh, so really excited about this board. There's, there's so many marquee games like last week, last week, it was awesome. Um, uh, that night slate, just the back and forth games, um, just an incredible night slate last, last week when you had, you know, overtime games. You had Penn State and USC late afternoon game going to overtime. Tennessee and Florida. Um, just tremendous football. And hopefully we get that again this week. Uh, we're going to start first in the Big 12. I'm going to give you guys an updated number. This game goes off 7:30 FS1. It is UCF taking on undefeated Iowa State. Uh, we backed the wrong side last week. Uh, we had West Virginia against Iowa State. I call it hillbilly magic. That's what you can capture sometimes in Morgantown. We did not get the hillbilly magic. We went up 7 nothing, And then Iowa State, this damn team is good. Um, I'm just going to say that with Rocco Beck, the quarterback, the way they play um, defense, uh, no miss assignments, physical. Uh, Matt Campbell has got a, a squad that is now in the top 10, and they're laying 13 and a half. So Iowa State has won and covered five straight this year. Um, top 10 teams on, uh, on five plus, um, on five plus games straight up and against the spread that are double digit favorites are 26 and one straight up 18, eight and one against the number, uh, the last 10 years. So, uh, and I'm trying to read this correctly for you guys, cause I did pull this earlier. So top 10 teams on, on, yes. Okay. Here we go. Let me reset this. So Iowa State has one and covered five straight. Top 10 teams, which Iowa State is right now at number nine, uh, that have started 5-0 and straight up and 5-0 and against the number that are double-digit favorites, which, by the way, Iowa State 13 and a half is the current number against Central Florida. 26-1 and straight up, 18-8-1 and against the number the last 10 years. You look at this Central Florida team under Gus Malzahn. They've lost three straight after a 3-0 and start. They have replaced quarterback. So Ja'Curry Brown, the sophomore out of Valdosta, will get his second start. Um, after the 3-0 start, they're losing three 
Two of those games by double digits, not even close to Colorado and Florida. I'm laying the points here with Iowa State. That's going to be your first play of the day. We are taking the Cyclones here, laying the 13 and a half. This team is good. Um, I do think they're going to lose a game or two down the stretch, but it ain't going to be against Central Florida. And I know we now live in a college football world where I am a uh, one of these guys that I love to go absolutes all the time. Um, and I can't do it after Vanderbilt beat Alabama. Uh, there are just too many unpredictable things right now in college football um, as far as like these random ass upsets that we've seen. But Iowa State, a much better team, much better coached. Um, and it's almost like Gus Malzahn has already retired at Central Florida. Anyway, with all that said, we are playing the Cyclones. We're laying the 13 and a half. Our next game, we're going to the ACC. This is a team that we've started to back a lot, and I'm a big fan. And the more I watch them, this team realistically should be 6-0. and After a 3-0 and start, Cal, three straight ACC losses. They outgained Florida State by almost 130 yards. They lose that game by five. They lead Miami by 20 in the second half, 14 minutes to go. They lose by one, and they held Pittsburgh – who we backed Cal last week, to just 277 yards and lost by two. So this Cal team is really on the brink of having a special season, and they're taking on an NC State team. Like, if you would have told me that NC State was kind of the surprise team of the ACC, not Pittsburgh, um, not even as competitive as Cal has been, I could have believed NC State coming into the season with Grayson McCall at quarterback. Um, that experiment hasn't worked. Uh, they're 0-3 in the ACC. They've lost all four of their power four games this this year. Uh, so the only two teams they've beaten are FCS schools. Um, NC State lose to Tennessee and Clemson by a combined 110 to 45. The problem they've got with this Cal Bear team is their run defense. NC State cannot run it. And C.J. Bailey taking over at quarterback from Grayson McCall – he can run it a little bit, but look to him to become the Wolfpack, or he will be, much like he was last week, Wolfpack's leading rusher. Uh, to me, that is not a recipe for success, especially on the road against Cal. Cal has been this. From West Coast, East Coast, East Coast, West Coast, all over. They're back in Berkeley. It's an early kick there, but I like Cal a lot in this spot. Uh, officially, we're laying 10, so this is back-to-back -back games. We're laying double digits, but we are playing the Cal Bears. We have stuck with them. Um, it is a gritty team, and they play a full 60 minutes. Um, and I think they get an opportunity to really pop NC State, flex a little bit here. Uh, next game, we're going still, we're going to stick in the ACC. We have got the undefeated Miami Hurricanes taking on Louisville. I am looking for an updated number here. Um, Miami, Louisville right now. Now, this is another 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, I should say, noon Eastern game, which I absolutely – traditionally hate playing these, but sometimes these games do pop. Right now, Miami is minus five. That total is high at 61 because Miami, every one of their games has gone over. They lead the nation in total offense, 584 yards a game. They lead the nation in passing offense with Cam Ward at over 400 yards per game. Um, they have struggled, though, the last couple of weeks. They should have lost to Virginia Tech. I didn't think the Hail Mary, I didn't think it was a touchdown, but it was called, ruled on the field a touchdown. There was not, um, you know, I, I just don't think once you have that touchdown call, there's no way you can overrule it. Uh, there was no way when you back, look back at replay that you could say that that wasn't a catch. Anyway, with that said, they should have lost that game. They win it. They definitely should have lost against Cal where they had the, uh, they were down 20 and end up losing that or end up winning that game by one. One of the better games of this college football season. Uh, Louisville has lost two of three, both one possession games to Notre Dame in South Bend, 31-24. And then in a, a shootout against SMU, 34-27. And by the way, this SMU team, which we gave you their over win total earlier in the offseason, which was eight and a half, they're really starting to round into a good squad. Um, I think the difference in this Louisville-Miami game, I think actually Louisville – wins this game. I think you've got a live dog situation, and you guys can get them at plus 160 right now uh, just to win the game outright on the money line. Isaac Brown running the football. Shuck's been really good. You know, a former uh, Texas Tech Red Raider. He is a guy, and then even before that, a former Oregon Duck. But 14 touchdowns, three interceptions, 
But Isaac Brown, 8.6 yards per carry. He is going to be the difference in this game. I think he will have a field day against the Miami defense. I know Miami's coming off a bye. Uh, Miami's good. I don't think they're great. I still think Clemson is the class of the ACC after watching more than half of the season play out. And I still think Louisville's a really good team and really good defense. So I think Louisville slowing down Cam Ward a little bit, forcing a turnover or two, and then Isaac Brown grinding it out and giving Louisville the outright win. We're going to officially call them plus five, but I think you can play them uh, plus 160, and you'd love to get that outright dog. But I do love Louisville plus the five. So we're just going to officially take our first dog here. We have got Louisville plus the five. Okay, two big marquee games, both in the SEC. I think everybody has been waiting for these games. Um, Alabama has been uh, kind of cardiac kids the last couple of weeks. You've gotten your money's worth. Yeah, I remember a day under Nick Saban where Alabama just whipped the dog shit out of everybody and the games weren't even fun to watch. They lose to Vanderbilt after, again, one of the best 30 minutes, one half of college football we will see when they were completely dominating. Georgia almost lost that game, lose to Vanderbilt, then struggle to beat South Carolina. Now they're laying three on the road to Tennessee. Um, listening to Alabama fans after the, 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 the win last week against South Carolina, we're going to get run off the field in Neyland. Well, that was before Tennessee went out, struggled, and ended up winning in overtime against Florida. Tennessee, you start to look at some of these numbers. They're fourth in scoring defense. That's great. Giving up less than 11 points per game. They haven't played a quality offense. Um, they've yet to allow 20 points. But again, this is a team that really hasn't been challenged offensively. Dating back to 2020, the Vols are one and seven straight up. And two and six against the number as a home underdog. Again, they are catching three here. Uh, uh, home underdog. The last two weeks of uh, Tennessee football, offensively, Nico was kind of the story coming out. First couple of games, he was a can't miss. He was, you know, some people said best team in football. Some people said this guy could be a Heisman finalist uh, as a first-year starter, as a redshirt freshman. They were shut out in the first half against Arkansas, shut out in the first half against Florida. They were fortunate to win the Florida game. Nico hasn't gone 200-plus passing yards in an SEC contest. And you look on the other side, this was a shootout. I was at this game two years ago in 2022 where Tennessee won uh, a track meet. And that game was obviously a shootout. Jalen Milrow, 23 total touchdowns. Uh, in six games. I think Jalen Milrow will have a big game against this Tennessee defense, and I think Nico turns it over multiple times. I like Alabama minus the three in this spot. This is, I don't want to call it an elimination game yet, but Tennessee losing to Arkansas, Alabama losing to Vanderbilt. Second loss, I think they can absorb it, especially with the Alabama brand, but you can't get a third loss after this. So this is a super important game for both teams, obviously. Uh, the other game, the marquee game of the week, is Georgia heading to Austin to take on Texas? This is a game we haven't seen in Austin before. So I think a lot of people are excited about this, and we don't really know how good Georgia is. This number is super weird. It's stretched out to five. Now, the one thing that concerns me with Georgia, against Alabama, zero sacks. Um, this past weekend, against Mississippi State, zero sacks. And I thought Van Buren, Michael Van Buren, true freshman quarterback for Jeff Levy, his first year at Mississippi State. I thought he played well in the second half against Georgia. Georgia's just missing a little something. Um, before I get to the official play here, and by, by the way, the Why Lose Campus pod, we do this every single week. Uh, you can get the daily package, 49, the weekly, 99, the monthly, 299. We've got plays up right now. Jump on board and win with us, whylose.com forward slash Lance. I'll give you that information again here in a second. Would love for you guys to jump on. It's going to be a big, big, big week for us. We've already handed you four Absolutely free winners right here on the Why Lose Campus pod. Uh, we're giving you number five right here. So this Texas offensive line is really good. Kelvin Banks, one of the, if not the best offensive linemen, along with Will Campbell at LSU. Um, 350 snaps this year. He's given up zero sacks. Quinn Ewers comes back. We backed Texas last week. We laid the 14 and a half. We got there relatively easy against a banged up Oklahoma team. Didn't think Quinn Ewers looked great, though. I thought he was a little off. So the thing that scares me is Georgia, the lack of pressure, and this was a Georgia team that has harassed quarterbacks under Kirby Smart his entire career there. They have not been getting pressure on the quarterback. That could be a problem. I do think it changes. I think Georgia's in a situation where they need to be motivated. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous. Against Auburn, I didn't think they were motivated. They went through the motions. They win the game. They didn't cover. Same with Mississippi State. Go through the motions, win the game by double digits. They don't cover. Now that they see the Texas brand, and by the way, Texas has got that number one next to them, 
Georgia first half against Alabama, awful. They came out in the second half motivated, and they played up to that Georgia standard. You look under Kirby Smart versus top five teams. Georgia is 11-4 and four against the number. Kirby has been favored in 105 of his 117 games as the head coach of the Bulldogs. He's seven and four against the number in those 11 instances where he was an underdog. So Kirby thrives in this spot. Steve Sarkeesian on the other side. Kirby's still best football coach right now in America. Steve Sarkeesian, two and eight straight up and four and six against the number against top tens. That goes back to his Washington and USC days along here with Texas. Um, I just think it's kind of the year of the dog in these big games. I like Georgia. I'm going to take them plus the five. I don't like where this line is moving. You know, this thing was at 1.33 and a half. It just continues to creep up. I think there is a lot of sharp money on Texas. Uh, that scares me a little bit. But I think people just doubt this Georgia team. They still have a ton of talent. And I believe the best quarterback in this game is Carson Beck. I think Quinn Ewers is outstanding. A little rusty coming back from the abdominal, abdominal strain in that first start back against Oklahoma. So I think that continues into this game. I think Georgia wins it outright. I will take Georgia plus the five officially, another plus 160 on the money line if you want to take a look at that. But just to recap, we have the Georgia Bulldogs plus five. We've got Alabama minus three. We've got Louisville plus five. Uh, we've got Cal minus 10 and Iowa State minus 13 and a half. Five plays for you right there on the Wiloos Campus Pod. We appreciate you guys jumping on. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, we do this each and every week. If you have any questions or comments for us, let us know. But very simple. Again, it's going to be a massive weekend for us. We've already started 1-0 in college football this week. We're going to crush it for you. I just gave you five winners that we love right there. we got a ton more coming up this weekend. Daily 49, weekly 99, monthly 299 jump on board and win with us why lose.com forward slash lance let's get all the winners right here at why lose for you this week